Uh, but we are also being joined at this point uh, by Major Mohammad Ali Shah, defence analyst. Uh, Major Mohammad Ali Shah, uh, hectic developments, of course, taking place in Pakistan. How do you view the events of the last 24 hours? Well, last 24 hours today have been extremely eventful, very entertaining at the same time, and it's been musical chairs going on with regards to who will fill the chair and who will actually stay on there. So, 10:30 a.m. tomorrow morning, yesterday morning, in fact, on Saturday. We were supposed to be seeing some activity in the parliament, but it was adjourned multiple times. The Supreme Court also gave a ruling that they would, okay, by night, 10, 10, 30, they should finish off the entire voting process. But that did not happen, even at that time, which meant Imran Khan, before leaving, before his departure as the Prime Minister, also made a mockery of the country Supreme Court. And ultimately, finally, at 2 a.m., the post midnight, also, the Chief Justice had said, or Pakistan had said that, you know, Let's have the voting now. And at 2 a.m., finally, when Imran Khan was removed from power, what a disgrace. The first prime minister ever in Pakistan to be removed from such a process. 19 prime ministers in Pakistan, 22 10 years of, of prime ministers, which means Nawaz Sharif three times. None, never has it happened in the history of Pakistan. I think Imran Khan deliberately wanted to make history. And you know, one more thing over there. Most importantly, the point to note. Yesterday, he came forward and gave out a few conditions that, okay, if he resigns, he would not be arrested and such things. And, you know, he has only ended up giving ideas to the opposition. And tomorrow, uh, by afternoon again, they would be, the election for the new prime minister would be announced. And, uh, uh, and yes, we are hopefully hope, hoping that probably it's going to be Shabazz Sharif, who has been the front runner all this while, and he is the leader of the opposition. So, yes, Iran Khan has created history before he goes and he has given a lot of ideas to people who would actually now once he's not in power he would he would uh, they would utilize those things for that all right uh, major mohammed ali shah stay with us in fact uh, as we turn to more developments coming in pakistan muslim league and uh, president shahbaz sharif who's currently the leader of opposition in the national assembly is also to become the next prime minister as ruling Imran Khan led Pakistan Tariq and Saab PTI government was voted out after losing the no-confidence motion. After Imran Khan's removal as Prime Minister in the wee hours of Sunday, Shehbaz took to Twitter to address his countrymen and said Park had emerged from a serious crisis after the dramatic events that unfolded last night. Sharif will be meeting with Park President Arif Alvi and a new leader of government will be officially elected on the 11th of April. Yeah, Major Shah. Uh, give us more perspective on Shehbaz Sharif, who is all set to take charge. Uh, tell us a bit more about him, uh, you know, his background and uh, what this means ahead for Pakistan. Well, as we all know, he's a younger the real brother of Nawaz Sharif, the prime, the uh, erstwhile prime minister of Pakistan, who came to power three times in Pakistan. Right now, who is living abroad, he has not. He, I would say, in a way, he's been banished from Pakistan. So when Imran Khan also had laid a precondition that Shabal Sharif would, should not become the Prime Minister at any cost, even if, if he resigns. So these were, see, beggars can be two over there, but if you feel that you are above the law, or if you feel you are above the constitution of a country, you are above the Supreme Court, you are above the military, you are above, uh, that would a country like Pakistan, where nobody can be above the military. The buck stops there, the end of it was there. So Shabal Sharif is, uh, was the, uh, always the front runner and the big mistake that Imran Khan did when he came to power, much before the entire fiasco of 6th October 2021, when Imran Khan refused to sign a file by the, by, by the, by the current army chief of Pakistan, General Bajwa. That was a time, before that, he had locked horns with Shabazz Sharif. And that was one big mistake that he had done. He, he should have rather have resolved that issue diplomatically, and military had to step in resolve the issue. So Shabal Sharif is a very powerful person, very, very popular, and I would say, yes, there was uh, Mariam Shah Nawaz, there was Blabal Bhutto, but Shah Nawaz, uh, but uh, Shabal Sharif was, uh, seemed to be the most sophisticated, the most cultured amongst the, I would say, I would put it, put it this way, Uday, the best of the bad lot. So I think the uh, Pakistan government, uh, I mean, ultimately it is incorrigible, and uh, the best that one can have from there is Shabal Sharif, there was a high drama there, and he was all set to take over on 3rd of April when the no conference last week, in fact. And apparently it said that he had already got his clothes stitched, that when he comes to power, Imran Khan had said he had got a new Ashkan sit, stitched. 
and Shawal Sharif also at the same time had also thrown. He had said, yeah, Imran Khan's wife is practicing black magic and uh, they are hens and cocks and uh, chicken. They are alive being burned in Imran Khan's house. So Shabazz Sharif is a very popular leader over there and probably, but the damage has been done a lot. There's been a lot of damage done to, to Pakistan by Imran Khan. So Shabazz Sharif could be a hope that he, it would, he would have to work very hard. He would have to first, it's like starting a business. First you uh, pay off your debts, then you break even, then you start taking profit thereafter. Similarly, now he has taken over, he would be, he, he should be, in all probability, taking over Pakistan in a, in a time when Pakistan is already going through a very, very tough time. They are already in great list of FATF, they are in debt, they are fighting Corona, the US is not blessing them anymore, Saudi Arabia refused to give them any loan, Imran Khan lands up in Russia a day before the war, even though he claimed that visit was planned two months before in advance and it had to happen and when Russia invited them, Russia is not going to be fully invited just before war. And President Putin will say, oh my God, oh my God, oh my God, look at that. I'm just starting a war tomorrow. And here this man comes and asks me for a loan. So Imran Khan made a totally clown of himself. He should have gone out respectfully. And Shabazz Sharif, again, let's see, the hope is pinned upon him. Let's see what wonders, what miracles, what magic he brings to Pakistan now for that. All right. Major Mohammad Ali Shah, Pakistan, uh, former Prime Minister Imran Khan now uh, deciding to deliberate on his next steps, uh, calling for this uh, core committee meeting today of his party. What's the way ahead for him? There's no way ahead for him. Today. Now it's finished. He's history. He's the... Now what he has to fight there for is, I hope he would be keeping his fingers crossed and he would be thinking, I hope I'm not arrested any further. I hope this something bad doesn't happen to him. Already his friends and family were fleeing the country. In fact, they were, uh, they were anticipating, expecting arrest any time for being close to Imran Khan. The speaker, the deputy speaker resigned just before the voting happened. And the speaker said you know, he had a uh, connection with Imran Khan for like for, for decades together. And he cannot really advocate a voting against Imran Khan. And that's a kind of an unprofessional thing. When you are a speaker, you are a speaker. You cannot side by a certain an individual. So yes, the way ahead for him is there's no way ahead for him. Only thing is he is scared. He is uh, worried now. He should not be arrested or anything by either the military or the police or by the state government or anyone. He is ready. He is right now. They, and regarding his political career, it's finished today. There is no comeback of Imran Khan hereafter because had he gone gracefully, he could have stood a chance. Yes, he could have. Well, well, interestingly, he's also indicating that he does not want to accept. Uh, this uh, imported government, he wants to go to the people. Does that mean that he is planning protests? Does that mean that uh, he is trying to uh, instigate people to come out onto the streets, Major Shah? Instigating people to come out on the streets and to protest, basically. And yes, he would be the first Prime Minister and now former Prime Minister to actually instigate people to protest. Where, if you see other countries, you will find the Prime Minister would be getting the home department, the, the the Home Ministry to control the riot, to control the protest. It should not flare up further, but he is the first person in the history of Pakistan to be removed in such a grace, disgraceful manner and to tell the people to protest. But nothing much is going to come out of protest. Yes, he gained popularity. I will not deny that. Okay? He did gain popularity of a lot of Pakistan people. And because he garnered the national sentiments there and by the way, his, by the means of his speeches, a way of influencing people, he did garner that support from certain sector of Pakistan, but yet not in the parliament, so to say. And he lost the no confidence motion. So now he can protest how much ever, but it will not result to anything. It will only create havoc and chaos. And there is a serious issue of law and order situation in Pakistan. And Imran Khan being the former prime minister, it's his responsibility again to make sure that the situation does not go out of hand and there's no further law and order problem. But unfortunately, yes, he would be instigating in, leading them to uh, I will not be surprised in case even if he uh, stoops to the level of writing for that matter over there. All right. Uh, you know, just talking now about the new uh, dispensation which is likely to come in of Shahbaz Sharif, what does this regime change mean, uh, Major Shah, for India and for the rest of the world? Well, uh, Imran Khan's government, uh, the Fawad Chaudhary and uh, Sheikh Rashid Ahmad, they, they themselves had said, you know, that, you know, that Ajmal Kasab in the year 2008, 2011 attacks in Mumbai, and the Taj attacks, uh, 
it was it was it was it was Nawaz Sharif who gave the address of Ajwal Kasab and the whereabouts and his details to India. So any kind any government that comes into Pakistan, if they propagate peace, if they want a friendly relationship with us, if they want to actually uh, live in peace and harmony, because you know in the neighborhood if there's fire in the neighborhood, it affects us. The heat ultimately comes to us also. So now if Shabazz Sharif is again, if he is. Uh, not very anti-India, the way Imran Khan used to actually garner the sentiments and the invoke the emotions and the nationalists and the patriotic feeling of Pakistani people by giving anti in talking anti-India all the time. And that was and one huge anti-India rhetoric played by Imran Khan, to which a lot of Pakistanis actually fell to. I hope that does not happen and I hope Shabal Sharif in fact function in a very more mature and a stable manner over there. Absolutely. Uh, well, uh, clearly, of course, these are uh, developments that we're going to have to look at uh, very, very closely. Uh, do you believe, Major Shah, that uh, it's now uh, pretty imminent that Shahbaz Sharif will take charge? Uh, do we expect that in the next day or two? Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Okay. It's uh, very evident and, uh, that Shahbaz Sharif is, uh, is, is the one who would be taking charge. And by, by tomorrow afternoon, latest, I feel it should be announced. Okay. And yes, he would be taking charge in a day or two will take charge, as you're saying, perhaps by tomorrow afternoon itself. We'll leave it at that. Major Mohammed Ali Shah, I appreciate you joining us uh, on NewsX with your perspective on that story.